Shalom, shalom as the brother Kadash. We want to start off by giving our praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rekha Kadash, Barak Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rekha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles, double honors to the elders, and double honors to all the brothers that's in this truth. So, what does it mean to be a prophet? You know, this is a very special um, topic for me, so I'm probably going to do like two or three parts to it because I'm going to have to break it down. So what I want to do is, is bring out what it means to be a prophet and the reason why I wanted to go into this topic. And then I want to go to each of the, um, you know, the major uh, prophets, the four major prophets, you know, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jeremiah, you know, and, and then go into the 12 minor prophets and just get a precept. You know, there's plenty of precepts that speaks on prophecy, but I just wanted to get a precept on each prophecy. So I'm going to do it in a couple parts. But the reason why I'm doing this is because this is what this is the main topic that we go into is prophecy. You know, the teachings that I learned from um, GMS not being an official member, but GMS, what I see from them personally is that they go into prophecy a lot. And that's where my spirit, you know, um, forms that too. like uh, my spirit connects that too. is prophecy. That's one of my favorite. That is my favorite topic to go into is prophecy. Like my favorite book is Revelations. You see what I'm saying? Which is, you know, that's full of prophecy. And then if you go into um, my favorite chapter, you know, that kind of changes all the time. But it used to be Isaiah chapter 14. But, you know, Isaiah 34 is is great, too, you know. But um, what made me go into this is, is I was looking, doing some homework, and I had seen this other group, you know. And, um, you know, I saw I was doing my research on them. So I went in looking at this other group to see what they was all about, you know, and I know that they teach different, you know, they teach, um, the Sabbath day is on, um, American May calendar, the weekend, you know, um, they teach that, um, anybody can make it stuff like that. So I wanted to try to understand if they were sincere about this. So the way that you understand them is you go to their leader or you go to the guy that that's above all these little small guys that, um, that these guys is learning from just like the same thing. If you wanted to understand GMS fully, then you probably wouldn't come to me. You would go to the apostles to understand it because that's who we learned from. Now, while I was doing that, I was going to the leader and examining a leader. And let me speak on the, the whole weekend thing. I mean, it's just complete blasphemy. I mean, I understand why you're doing it. If you say it's easier to do it, you know, we don't have a temple set up and stuff like that. Okay, that makes sense. But you got to understand that's not the true Sabbath day. You know, the Lord doesn't change. Man calendars have changed throughout times with different um, civilizations. So you don't think, I mean, you couldn't possibly think that the Lord is going to come set up a kingdom and there's going to be Sabbath days and it's going to be based off America, America's calendar when the Lord is coming back to destroy America, which is Mystery Babylon. You can't possibly think that the American calendar that we have today is the same calendar that they had during the time of Exodus in the wilderness with the Israelites when they got the law, statutes and commandments. You couldn't possibly think that. So... These things seem simple to us, but you got to really go through and examine, man. And when I was examining their leader, one thing that I realized about him is, is that he's, he's just like a, a black pastor. You know, it's just they woke up and they know that we're Israelites. You know, that's the new cool thing. So everybody wants to jump on that train, but they don't want to teach the truth. They don't want to teach the bitterness of the Bible. And what was the main thing about the prophets, right? The prophets was... The main thing about the prophets was that the prophets always was prophesying of doom. You know, the prophets was prophesying a doom most of the time, the bitterness that nobody wanted to hear. So like when you go to Amos or when you go to Hosea or you go to um, Jonah, Jonah had to go um, prophesize against the city of Nineveh of doom that was going to come to the city you know it was never we was not prophesying good things and that's what they're doing so i had to ask myself the question of what really is a prophet you know these guys i seen this guy he was prophesying about the healing power of god and that's such a convenient um title is because he could go into that he could bring out one precept and then he could just go into a whole bunch of doctrine just talking he could bring out one precept. The difference with us, which I'm about to show you is, is that we go through and we get a precept for every single thing we say. Like I have to make myself talk. Like right now I'm making myself talk and tell you how I feel 
from from the heart, telling tell you how I feel from the spirit. I have to make myself do that because I what I end up doing is I catch it myself just pulling out a whole bunch of precepts, a whole bunch of precepts, precept, precept, precept for everything to explain everything. And then a lot of people get lost in it. So I have to make myself actually break it down and talk to you. You know, because the way I look at it is is look, the precept is gonna break it down for you, right? Now he was going into that topic, which is convenient, which is the same thing that your pastor or a man at church or a preacher or something, they're gonna they're gonna pull one scripture and they're gonna go into something like the healing power of God. And he was talking about how the healing power of God is good because even though there was a pandemic on earth, none of their they lost none of their people and, and their people was good. <laughs> but you don't understand, man, that the Lord is coming back to destroy the wicked and destroy the earth. You, We prophesy of the prophecies. He wasn't going into any prophecy. He was just being thankful, I guess, that none of his people was hurt during this pandemic. But this is just the beginning of SARS. Like Matthew chapter 24 says, which is a great book that um, gives that breaks down a lot of prophecy, especially that chapter in um, chapter 25, too. You know, so. I was kind of seeing how convenient that was for him to do that. And I was like, look, man, this is like either their leader or a guy that's, you know, um, high statue amongst them. And I was like, man, look, look, look what their leader is talking about. He's not going into prophecy. So I had to ask myself, like, what makes a prophet a prophet? You know, so let's let's just jump into the scriptures and see if we could break it down. And then let's just start going into some prophecies, you know. But I had to ask myself. What makes a prophet a prophet, you know, a true prophet? You know, I don't know if he claims to be a prophet or not, but it just sounds so convenient how he could go into the healing power of God. Bring out one scripture within, I watched like 30 minutes of it. He bring out, he brought out one scripture and then it was just a whole bunch of rambling, just a whole bunch of rambling. See, the healing power of God is so good. The reason why they can't go into a prophecy is because they don't understand them. They're not true prophets. They don't understand the prophecies. They can't break it down. I would like I would love to see him go into the book of Revelations and break down the different prophecies in Revelation. I guarantee he can't break down Revelations chapter 12. Because in order for you to break down Revelations chapter 12 the correct way, you have to admit that the Edomites are the so-called white man, which which they're not admitting that, that they can't be saved. And that the Lord is coming back to destroy them. You have to admit that the so-called UFOs are chariots, which they do not teach. So I so I know for a fact he can't break down Revelations 12 or Revelations 13 for that fact. Or we know they can't break down Revelations 18 and 17 because they don't believe that the mystery. They believe that mystery Babylon is the Vatican City. So they are already going off right there. If you can't break down Revelation 17 and 18, then you can't break down Revelation 19 or 20 either. You see what I'm saying? If you can't break down Revelations 12, then I know you can't break down Revelations 13. I know you can't break down Revelations 2. I know you can't break down Revelations 3. And if you believe any and everybody could be saved, then I know you can't break down Revelation 7. I know you can't break down Revelations 11. See, that's my favorite book, man. You see what I'm saying? So I know, I know for a fact you can't break down Revelation 6. Because y'all don't believe that America's mystery Babylon is going to be destroyed by nuclear weapons. Which means that you can't break down Revelations 8 either. I mean, it's just go on and on. You see what I'm saying? So, let's jump in here, right? And I see with their younger guys that, you know, they're, they're kind of going and getting the truth from this guy that I was watching. What they perceive to be the truth. But I see that their problem is, is that they're not eating the whole row. You know, that's another thing that makes a prophet a prophet, what it means to be a prophet. You got to eat the whole row, meaning you got to learn the whole Bible. Now, these guys are kind of just going off certain writings, which is normally, you know, Paul's writings, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you got to eat the whole row. You can't possibly get that understanding that the Sabbath day is on the on the weekend or all nations could be saved. If you read, the, if you eat in the whole row, just like if you go to, um, Deuteronomy 30. It clearly tells you that who salvation is for, what's going to happen with the other nations. Jeremiah 49 and 48, this tells you, it's telling you um, the destruction and the judgment that's coming upon these other nations. It's telling you all the things. I mean, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61, Jeremiah 30, Jeremiah 31 tells you exactly who salvation is for 
and the new covenant is for. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, right? Verse um, here, verse 1. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findeth, eat this row, and go speak into the house of Israel. So you got to eat this row. And this is talking about the whole entire um, Bible. Verse 2, it says, So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the row. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thou its bowels with the row um, that I give thee. Then did um, I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. So you got to speak with the words. But remember, the Lord comes in the volume of the Bible, you know, the um, the Lord, um, the whole Bible. So you have to eat this whole row, this whole Bible, and then go speak. A lot of these men are unlearned. You know, they need to get up under our apostles and learn from our apostles. And that's not being, um, that's not being arrogant. That's not being by me saying that because remember, I'm not even an official member of GMS. That's me actually being humble to actually say, look, y'all need to get under the apostles, man. Because even I know better, even though I know that I need to learn from them and not just the apostles, but the elders and all and other brothers is speaking the, the truth. But that's because it simply is the truth, you know. You get a better understanding of breakdown. They're not getting these things. Now, if you go to um, verse 5, it says, For thou art sent to the people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. So that's who we're sent to. That's what it means to be a prophet is to prophesy. And you got to eat the whole row and then go out there and prophesy. Now, dealing with the name of the Lord, because that's another thing that they go off. Well, I'm not really I'm just going to touch on it because this is about this isn't about the name of the Lord. This lesson right here. This is actually about what it means to be a prophet. What what do a prophet do? What does a prophet do now? The name of the Lord and the scriptures speak about a pure language. That pure language is not it's not talking about Greek and it's not talking about um, English. It's not talking about Spanish. That pure language is talking about the ancient Hebrew. So you, so here it is. You think that the Lord, um, Son, our Savior, you know, our Lord is he? His name wasn't in a pure language. And if you say yeah, that his name, that his real name is in the pure language, right? Then I will have to ask you, what is the pure language? And you will have to answer and say Hebrew. He was a Hebrew Israelite. He had a Hebrew Israelite name. The name Jesus doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have a meaning behind it. But the name Yahweh Shai does. It means he's the savior. He saves. So the Hebrew Israelite names had meanings behind them. Moses had name had a meaning. Like my name Kadash, that has a meaning behind it. it goes back to holy. So our names had meaning behind it. Jesus doesn't have a meaning behind it. Actually, it goes back to the to the um earth being an earth pig. So if you was really sincere about this, you wouldn't call upon the name Jesus because you would understand and know for a fact with the letter J wasn't even around during that time and he was a Hebrew Israelite, you would understand that that's not his true name. And if you didn't, and you say, well, we don't know his true name, so we call on Jesus, then you would just call on the unknown God. You would say the unknown God, we don't know his name. We don't know his true name. And you would leave it there. You would just say, you would use titles, the most high God. You wouldn't use the name Jesus because you already admitting that. If you admit that you don't know the name, then you already admitting that you know that the name Jesus isn't the real name. And if you say what well, the, the word Jesus goes back to Isus, it goes back to that in the Greek. Then why are you why aren't you praying to the name Isus? Which shows that it's bullshit. But I'm not going to get off on that tangent. I'm going to go to Ezekiel chapter um, 33 what does it mean to be a prophet you know hopefully I can make this edifying breaking it down man cause if if our doctrine is so off like they like to say how could we go and I'm about to do this right now how could we go throughout the whole bible breaking these things down to you everything matches together what I'm te what we're teaching out of revelations matches with the things that it talks about in Deuteronomy, that it talks about in the Apocrypha, that it talks about in Isaiah, which we're about to go through. Let's get past this part. This is Isaiah, I mean, Ezekiel chapter 33. Um, what does it mean to be a prophet? We're just going to get straight to the point. This is uh, verse 
Um, uh, here, let me see where I want to start at. I start verse thirty two. It says, "Lo, thou art into them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not." And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. And that's what it means to be a prophet. We prophesy. But the things we're prophesying, right, when they come to pass, then the people are going to know that you are a prophet. And that's what a prophet do. We prophesize of future events. So talking about the healing power of God, which is a great thing. But going into that and those which are teachings is about topics like that where you could pull out one scripture and not really go into prophecy we're we're in the time of prophecy that's why you got a lot of brothers leaving camps like that leaving places like that and they're coming over to the hebrew israelite thing because they see that these prophecies are popping and they want to they want to learn them they want to learn what's going on and what's going to happen they don't want to be stuck into watching the dude for an hour talk about the healing power of god and he pull out one precept and then he just start rambling and rambling and rambling and brothers and sisters and you gotta and brothers and sisters you know and you gotta do this and brothers and sisters like i said we're gonna be all right god is loving and his power is healing and if you just believe brothers and sisters we're gonna be all right I man brothers and sisters want to know the prophecies they want to get into these prophecies, and we are we the only ones here breaking these prophecies down, man. That's why I say I guarantee that the dude I'm talking about, he can't go into the book of Revelations. I guarantee he very rarely touches on the book of Revelations. Now, if you go into, like I said, what does a prophet do? Well, we prophesy of events that's going to happen. You know, we're like watchmen. Matter of fact, if you jump back um, a couple verses in this um if you go to verse 1, um, Ezekiel 33, verse um, verse 1, it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, which is the same thing as prophesied to the people of my children, and saying to them, When I bring the sword in the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. So this watchman is watching for future events. Things is about to happen. And he's going back and he's prophesying to the people of these things that's going to happen. And when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. So that's what we're doing today. We warning you. We warn you. And I'm finna go through a whole bunch of precepts and prophecies that's going to warn you. If you ain't got the warning after you watch these couple videos, um, doing your time, you can. And it's edifying to you. You're going to get the warning. You should get it. Now, it says be a watchman right now it says when he see the sword come upon the land he blow the trumpet and warn the people so what are we warning you of today we're warning you of the sword they they talking about how they survived the pandemic we warned you and we was the ones telling you it was a pandemic coming we was the ones telling you matthews 24 pestilences earthquakes in diverse places wars and rumors of wars and these things were going to happen the enemy's going to come down we the ones prophesying to you these things two-thirds are going to be cut off we the ones that's giving you these prophecies and it's interesting that's why a lot of people are switching sides and coming to our side the, the straight way you know and that says uh, verse 4 then so whoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take him not warning if the sword come and take him away his blood should be upon his own head and another thing that i wanted to and I'm gonna leave that there because it goes into the whole trumpet and and the um and the watchmen and everything like that. And another thing I wanted to say is, you know, what this guy was watching, it's kind of convenient how they just in the house. <laughs> they not outside, man. Pandemic is over, man. Come outside. You know, they not outside, man. They in the house. It's kind of convenient, like probably in his basement at a little some or in you know, sitting on a couch or something like that or some little desk or something and they on live but when y'all gonna come outside didn't the lord say go out on the highways and byways and teach and bid them to the marriage doesn't ezekiel chapter 37 since we talking about prophecies and we in the book of ezekiel isn't it talking about the valley of dry bones and isn't it talking about go out there and make one stick and put the name you know and then bring the two um kingdoms together and when the people come up asking tell them this isn't it talking about that now yeah do we use the internet yeah but you actually got to be out there with the people man just like the prophets are old you know you got to be out there with them 
so they could see you so people could ask you questions and it's kind of convenient how they not outside man they just on the internet that's it they got a little they got a little liking a little following and that's it man maybe they at some type of school but when did the lord say that we got to go to a college to learn to learn the scriptures um who was it amos amos was just a field man um i believe they said yeah he was just a field man what was jonah you know and these were just regular men that was called into this truth when they didn't even think they could be prophets they didn't even want to be prophets moses couldn't speak well you know but he was called to be in this truth when did the lord say we got to go to some type of seminar or some type of college bible study to learn the truth that's not how this work man now if you jump to um ezekiel 35 i'm just going to touch on this just to show you what it means to be a prophet and what does a prophet do ezekiel chapter 35 it says moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man set thy face against mount sire and prophesy against it that's what prophets prophets do man we prophesy of the destruction of the lord that's about to come on these different nations so this is a prophecy and these and this is still has to happen you know prophesying against mount sire we're prophesying against mount sire to this day that this place is going to be destroyed right so you have to understand who the edomites are you have to understand what mount sire is in order to prophesy against them you got to understand what the lord is going to do to them what the prophecy mean so that's what a prophet do you know we're prophesying against the nations and the judgment that's that's coming upon the nations when i'm watching y'all when i'm watching these dudes videos and stuff they not prophesying against the nations man they talking about loving and healing and be thankful that you're still that you got through the pandemic and stuff like that and 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 all this other stuff man they not prophesying against the nations very rarely do i ever see these guys break down okay this is what's going to happen to esau okay this is what's going to happen to moab they not prophesying so that makes them they're not prophets man they're false prophets now this is verse uh three it says, and saying to them, thus saith the Lord of God, behold, O Mount Sire, I am against thee. So the Lord telling Ezekiel to go out there and prophesy, man. But this is talking about the future prophecy too. It says, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And that goes back to mystery Babylon too. In the, all the way in Revelations 18 and 17 Because the Lord is going to make this place Destiny, no man's ever going to live On this land again, going to um, Jeremiah uh, 49 And Isaiah chapter 13 You know, so Let me um Just stop right there with that one, let me jump to You got to prophesy against The nations and the judgment that's coming They not doing that man They, pro they, they talking about Um you know, women being kidnapped today, the Lord's judgment, stuff. They they talking about stuff like that, like the women being kidnapped and missing girls and um and yeah, they teaching you gotta keep the law statutes and commandments from what I seen, you know. They teach you gotta keep the law statutes commandments. That's that's true. But you gotta teach prophecy too. You know, we out here to wake up our people to keep the law statutes commandments. And at the same time we prophesying against the nations. That's another big role of a prophet is prophesying of the destruction to come and they're not prophesying of the destruction very rarely do they talk about the destruction that's going to come they might mention it you know they might mention it but they're not going in the scriptures and breaking them down like we do breaking it down precept upon precept of the judgment that's going to come why because they don't want to offend other nations they don't want to offend them. So they don't want to go out there and say, look, the white man's Esau. The Lord is going to destroy America. They don't want to say that. They want to say mystery Babylon is the Vatican City because they don't want to offend their peers. They don't want to offend people they're around. They at they these schools, these seminars and stuff like that. They got to deal with these people and they don't want to offend them. That's that's what I got from it. Now, this is Ezekiel chapter um, 37, which we already spoke on. So I'm just going to um, jump past it um, here. Uh, matter of fact, let me just get a um, a quick precept or two out of it. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 12. It says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus say the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So this is a prophecy. We're prophesying this today. 
same thing, you know. So we prophesying to the people like the Lord is going to bring them back. And that says in a remnant of them, right? One third, um, 144,000 elect, you know, mixed multitude. It says, and ye should know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you um, up out of your graves. Now, you got to understand. Just, just like going back to Ezekiel chapter 3, you got to eat this whole rope. So you got to know context. You got to know who is the Lord talking to it about on right here. This is a prophecy that's going to happen. Now, is the Lord talking to everybody on earth and anybody and everybody can be saved? No, he's talking to the Israelites right here. <laughs> it says, and shall put my spirit um, in you, and ye shall live, in, in, um, and I shall place you in your own land. So if this for everybody, why do the Lord got to place the Israelites in their own land. Couldn't he just save the whole world? No, he's taking them and placing them in their own land. He's separating them. The Lord is for separation. And if you're going to place a certain people in their own land, then that's you separating them from the rest of the people. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. And it's the Lord that does this. So why are they prophesying that anybody and everybody can make it? Because of their connections, their ties to the world. They don't want to offend people. You know, and they, I mean, if you go to what the new covenant is, Jeremiah 31, Hebrews 8 and 8, it clearly speaks about the new covenant being for the house of Israel. But why are they skipping over these precepts? Why are they ignoring the evidence, ignoring these precepts? Because they're ties to the world, man. Verse, um, it says, I have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Moreover, son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions and then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph and a stick of Ephraim for all of the house of Israel, his companions. So when have they did this? I haven't seen them do this. This is what we're commanded to do this too. Just like Ezekiel, if you're a prophet, when have they done this? They haven't done this. So they click, they quick to tell us, tell us that the 12 tribes tore us off. But where y'all tore at? Do y'all know who the 12 tribes are today? Do y'all have the answers? No, y'all ain't got the answers. So I, you see what I'm saying? So we got the answers. And a lot of them is, like I said, they're starting to convert. A lot of brothers are starting to see, like, man, look, this is all over here. This is watered down. Let me go over here where the truth is at, where the fire is at. And that's why I got the fire on the screen right now. And they're starting to come and seek after the truth from the Hebrew Israelites, the ones that you see on the corners with the garments on, with the fringes. Y'all talk about keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, but but here he is. Y'all wearing suits. Where y'all fringes at? Y'all ain't even got fringes on. I ain't seen y'all with a pair of fringes next to y'all, but y'all talking about keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Y'all don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. I seen this one guy I went to school with um, I, when I was doing my little research, my little homework. He talking about, look, you could be doing the work of the Lord, but but not be um living the life of the Lord. But that's so hypocritical because I've never seen him next to a pair of fringes. Isn't what is numbers 15, 48, 47, something like that? You could find it. Doesn't it talk about wearing fringes? I ain't never seen him next to a pair of fringes. Or 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 is it just, you know, maybe I just haven't seen it. But maybe he could correct me on that. Maybe he could come and say, no, I do wear my fringes and woo out the bam if he does see the video or if it gets back to him. But I mean that's crazy. So you talking about all this and all that, man. You you ain't you ain't wear your fringes. I seen I seen the teacher, one of y'all high statue uh, um, status guys, or maybe he's y'all teacher or y'all elder or whatever. He was prophesying. He was so called prophesying. He was bringing out scriptures. He ain't even have no fringes on. He had a t shirt on. And then y'all want to get on the apostles. And y'all so, and, and see, this is why I say y'all ties to the world. Y'all thinking westernized. That's why y'all got your suits on. You you want to be like an Edomite. That's the Edomite's garments. It's their suits and their tie. You want to be all up in their colleges and stuff because y'all want to be like them. You know, you want to follow the world. The world wears suits. When you go to the summits or when you go to NATO or you go to EU and you see all those men and they behind the tables and they all discussing what they're going to do, what they got on. They got suits. Y'all following the world, man. The world is wicked, though. Then y'all want to get on the apostles about the rape doctrine. Well, all you got to do is open your book up and go to Deuteronomy. What's that? Chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. 
Here, let me see if I can find it, man. Which shows you that you're in your... Which tells us you're clearly in your feelings, man. And you've been westernized and you're thinking of a westernized way. Oh, I might have the wrong chapter here. Let me see if I can find it. Well, doing Monterey 21 speaks about it too. It speaks about... um. <clears throat> Uh, verse 11, uh, verse 10, when thou goest forth to war against thy enemies and the Lord thy God has delivered them into thy hand and thou has taken them captive. So he taken them captive, right? It says, and see if among the captives a beautiful woman. So here he is, we go on to war. So do you think we ain't got wives at home? So that, that cuts the multiple wives. I mean, um, we only can have one wife. Oh, he's cheating on his boss. Man, we can have multiple wives because we got wives at home. But guess what? We go to war and we take their their people captive. We see among them captives a beautiful woman and has a desire into her that thou will have her to to thy wife. We could take another wife, meaning we could take if we take down another, just like when we take down the Edomites, a lot of they women brothers is going to take them as wives because of this, this in our law right here. Verse 12, when thou shalt bring her home to thy house and she shall shave her head. Is she going to have a choice? I don't want to shave my head. No, she's going to have to shave her head and purr her nails. And it says you could take her to be a wife. Now, you just killed her brothers, her uncles, all the men, right? And there's woman left and young children. Or are you going to go up to her and ask her, okay, we just killed, we just took down your whole people, right? Uh, would you like to be my wife? And she gonna kind of have a choice to be like, um, no, um, yeah, you know, I think, yeah, that's a good idea. We could work our way to that. Do you know, just wine and dine me and maybe we could see where it goes. No, man, that's not how it works. When you see her and you say, look, I want her to be my wife. She has no choice. That's why I was telling you, verse 12, you know, she has to shave her head, pair her nails, and she should put her rim of captivity from off her because, you know, she's going to step into being your wife. And she'll remain in thy house, but she has to remain in the house. Do, do she have a choice to say, well, I don't want to live in the house? And be well her father and mother a full month. Do she have a choice to say, look, my father and my mother, I want to be well done for a full month? No, she has no choice. So some people would call that a rape doctrine. And then this is verse 15. If a man has two wives, beloved, I mean, right there, that kills the whole we only can have one wife thing. Let me see if I can find this. Um, yeah, um, Deuteronomy chapter 22 tells you about the rape doctrine it says verse 23 if a damsel is that is a virgin be betrothed unto her husband and the man find her in the city and lie with her so she already betrothed to her husband if a man lie with her then she should bring them both into the gate of the city and um ye should stone them with stones that they die the damsel because she cried not so if she cried not and she already betrothed that's adultery it's adultery has nothing to do with a man getting multiple wives the longest they're single and they don't have husbands being in the city and um in the man because he has humbled his neighbor's wife that's why because he's humbled his neighbor wife this is the point so thou put um away evil from among you but this is the point right here but if a man um uh, find a betrothed damsel in the field and a man force her rapes her and lie with her then the man only that lay with her should die right so he should die because she's betrothed damsel meaning she's um, betrothed to have a husband she's already set up in marriage and she belongs to another man that's the only reason why but verse 26 but to the damsel that shall do nothing there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death for as when a man rises against his neighbor he slayeth him even so in this matter for he found her in the field and the betrothed damsel cried and there was none to save her if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed okay so this is the difference verse 28 is the point so if she's not betrothed, if she doesn't belong to another man or arrange marriage to another man, right, and lay a hold of her. So she's a virgin. She's a young woman. She's a um, young maiden. She's a damsel, right, and lay hold of her and lie with her and they be found. Then the man that lay with her should give unto the damsel father 50 shekels of silver. It, it doesn't say he needs to be put to death. No, it just says, look, he got to pay the father, you know, and it says, 
and she should be his wife. So not only did he find her, rape her, right? He lay a hold of her. She wasn't betrothed. She didn't belong. She was single, right? And not only does it say that he has to pay the father, but she has to stay his wife. Do she have a choice to say, I don't want to be his wife? No, she has to be his wife because he has humbled her. He, ha he may not put her away all his days. The only difference is he can't get rid of her. He has, she has to be a wife all his days. A man should not take his father's wife nor discover his father's skirt, right? Because that's adultery because she belongs to his father. But if the woman doesn't belong to anybody and he rapes her, which you so-called the um, doctrine, right? Which they was hating off so much. They was getting on apostles about this for so much. When it's right here in the scriptures, I'm literally reading it. So what does that tell me? They're tied to the world because they could pick this up and read it too. They could read Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28 down, just like we can. It's in the law, man. So are you guys against the law or are you for the law? You oh, okay. You for the sweet part. Like it said in Ezekiel um, chapter three, it's sweet in your mouth, but the bitterness in your belly, you don't want the bitter part of the scriptures. And that's where these guys go off at. Let me grab a, um, let me leave that there. And then I'm going to come back with part two. I'm probably going to have to do four parts to this. So I'm going to say salvation to the elect, shallow one.